Hello and welcome back again. In this video, I'll be introducing you uh, with the basic stuff of programming the robot for uh, maneuvering the robot in certain directions. So uh, to maneuver any robot, we need some basic movements like forward, backward, reverse, uh, or right and left. Uh, specifically in this maids following robot, we generally need uh, the same basic movements. So let's get started with this one and let me first of all into you, introduce you with uh, uh, the Arduino ID that we'll be using in this course. So as we have seen earlier, this is the same Blink program uh, that we have seen earlier uh, where it has just two functions set up where we write all the part of the code which is uh, required to be executed only once and the other function called loop where uh, we write all those instructions which needs to be uh, continuously monitored or executed in a loop. So to begin with, uh, I'm going to simply go to file and create a new function or uh, so-called a sketchbook. So here, let us begin one thing. Um, uh, initially, we, uh, we have to include certain libraries. So for that, we need to first of all uh, verify that we have all the libraries that we are interested in. So I'm interested in using the Adafruit's motor shield that I have shown you earlier. So I'll click that. So as soon as you click on that sketch and include library, which we are interested in, it has uh, automatically added a line called include afmotor.h. So this afmotor.h is equipped with certain functions uh, called afdc motor. Uh, as we have seen earlier, uh, our motor shield actually has two L293D IC, which is capable to drive four individual DC motors. But as I have told you, we are going to use M3 and M4 only for this one. So that we need to first of all create an instance for motor M3 and M1, sorry, motor M3 and M4. So for that, the instructions are going to be something like this. We need to first of all write AF. And remember these functions are case sensitive. So if I fail to write this, uh, in a improper way, then probably you would be able to see that this highlighted part is not highlighted. So whenever it gets an orange kind of a color, then it's a meaning that you are actually typing the perfect keyword, which is intended to be used. So AFDC motor, what this uh, instance does is it actually generates an object for this one. Uh, which we are about to use. So I'll be calling uh, the AF DC motor, uh, something like, let me call it M3. So for easy naming and easy uh, mapping, we can simply call it M3. So M3 is going to be the instance name. So in our case, whenever you say M3.write or maybe M3.run or M3.speed, uh, we are actually controlling the properties of the M3 port on our motor shield. So further, the things will be more clear. We need to specify. So the numbers that we actually put inside this parenthesis is uh, the exact port which is available on Adafruit motor shield. So as I said earlier that we are about to use M3 and M4, I have named it with a name called M3 and I'm going to map it with the third port of our motor shield. So let me quickly copy this and I'm going to paste it again for the second motor and I'll be calling it M4 and I'm mapping it with the fourth motor or so-called the fourth port. Next, uh, this is all about having a motor instance then what we need next is under setup, we need to perform certain tasks like uh, setting the speed for the motor. So once we have defined the instances for uh, motor M3 and M4, now we need to do everything that is required to be done with this motor once, uh, like setting speed or maybe uh, 
releasing the motors uh, in an initial phase. Otherwise, what happens whenever you initialize a motor uh, with a, a specific speed, uh, then the motors start to begin uh, uh, in a specific direction, either in a forward direction or a reverse direction, and it never stops. So it becomes a little bit complex process whenever you are dealing it with the first time. So just stay uh, with me in this video and uh, the things will become more clear further. So um, the thing that we need to define here is the speed of each and every instance that we have generated earlier. So the instance for M3 motor is M3 dot fetch speed. So what I'm currently doing with this uh, instruction is that I'm setting the speed for M3 motor instance at 200 rpm so i'm going to write the same instance uh, instruction for m4 so these two instructions are going to take care of setting the motor speed then as soon as you set the speed your m3 and m4 connected motors are going to start rotating with a 200 rpm speed immediately but we don't want that to happen as soon as you uh, reset your controller or power on your microcontroller. So we need to also take care that whenever you set the speed, you stop them immediately. So for that, we have a function called run. So whatever you put inside this parenthesis, like if I'm writing forward, it's a meaning that my M3 motor is going to roll in a, in a certain direction. Yeah, I can write backward, I can write right and left. So these are the four possible combinations. So you can refer the Adafruit's uh, official data sheet for this one. And of course, the library docs to identify uh, what exact functions are offered by this Adafruit Shield uh, library. So currently, I'm interested in releasing the M3 and M4 motors it is a meaning that as soon as we set the speed, they will be halting or they will be stopped there itself. So next what we need is we can directly go to uh, the loop function and write a couple of instructions there as well. So I would like to uh, uh, tell something regarding uh, the exact structuring of this program. So I would prefer designing a new function completely for uh, identifying the various, uh, what we call the directions of a robot. So what we'll be doing is, I'll define these four functions. front, back, right, and left. So I'll define these four functions uh, so that later on I'll be simply calling the front function, back function, right function, and left function individually under loop so as to identify the exact direction. Otherwise, what will happen? Uh, we're about to design a maze solver robot, so we need to first of all record the path and then uh, save it and then optimize it and then take certain decisions based on the line sensor outputs that your controller is able to sense. So for a better reading capability of your code, it's always uh, recommended to maintain certain modular programming by defining functions as and when required. So I'll write one instruction here. So let me first of all uh, introduce you with uh, uh, this instruction, which says m3.run. So this is what I was talking earlier. That is writing m3.run forward will actually rotate. Uh, the motor to rotate in forward direction and I'm going to do the same thing with M4 
okay so there is a reason why i'm actually uh, going for okay so there is a reason why i'm actually going for uh, sometimes writing backward and forward so currently as i'm preferring to write a uh, front going direction uh, it is important to note that both the directions i mean m3 and m4 must be having either forward forward or backward and backward so as i told you earlier uh, while demonstrating the Arduino motor shield that if you are actually calling this front function as of now and um, then definitely your M3 and M4 motor will start uh, rolling in the forward direction but it will never ever stop until you actually pull off the power supply. This is because uh, you need to take care that whenever you are calling this function it will stay so for a certain amount of period and then um, the motors get released. So currently what I'll be doing is I'll be putting a delay of 100 milliseconds and then I'm going to simply copy these instructions and then I'll try to release these two motors so some quick copy paste will always make the process much simple Okay, so here we have a function uh, called setup where I have set the speed and I have released it. Uh, and as soon as I enter into loop, uh, if I call the function called front here, then of course uh, it will fetch this function. Then it will run in forward direction for 100 milliseconds and then it will stop. So always to have some smooth transitions you can put a small delay which will make the things uh, run a little bit smooth away so this is like capacitors adding capacitors in electronics so these slight delays are actually uh, used uh, in electronics for um, damping some sort of uh, uh, vibrations and all so if you think that your motor is uh, offering some sort of jerk or uh, it's showing some uh, um, out of the uh, track kind of a problems then definitely you can go ahead and add certain delays as and when required so later on you can uh, comment down all these delays if you want a very quick response so further uh, what i'll be doing is i'll be similarly writing a function for left and a function for right and a function for back and of course a function to halt so i'll show you i have already written this code for you and this is how it happens so similar to the front direction where we are moving m3 and m4 uh, in the same forward moving direction similarly we need to replace this motor one so it will become m3 and this will be m4 we don't need these two instructions here then i'll put a delay of 100 and i'll be releasing both the motors so whenever you want to move le uh, left then your right motor I hope this is I mean uh, on my configuration M4 is going to be the right side motor so your right motor should move towards the front direction and left motor should move towards the back direction and that's how uh, you attain this left movement similarly uh, if you have M3 forward and M4 backwards then what you attain is a right side direction so sometimes you need to copy paste the things to ease the job similarly for going back side you need to write m3 dot backward and m3 dot Oh, we got m3 dot release okay let me save this first of all otherwise it's it will be um, 
so I call it motor test. Fine. So this is another uh, function where I'll be adding it here. So whenever we reach that end junction, then I'll be simply calling this halt. Further, we'll be using all these functions together to help us in achieving proper direction. So after halting, you're going to wait for simply 10 milliseconds. That's uh, fair enough. Okay, so for time being, I'll be removing this delay. Let us check the performance first of all, and then we can get back and identify so once you are sure that you have written all the code uh, now we can move forward and click on verify and this is where you actually uh, see the debug outputs i mean the status uh, of what your compiler is trying to convey you so currently the compiler says it's compiling the sketch if there are any errors and warnings you'll be able to see it under this debug window it should happen within uh, like 15 to 20 seconds so this is the progress bar okay so it should say done compiling if there are no errors so let's check what it gives Okay, so there are no errors, absolutely. The program is um, written and well drafted. So just for uh, proper understanding, if the code becomes real lengthy, you can simply go to uh, tools and click on auto format, or you can simply go for this control T. Just observe what happens. So uh, your complete code will be properly indented depending upon uh, where you have used these braces and all. So it's a very good feature of Arduino IDE. So what we have here now is we got five functions defined outside the loop, so-called front, back, right, left, and halt. And now I'll be calling them one by one in my loop. Uh, so it would be better if I take all these things and paste them here. So use control R as a shortcut to recompile it. Here I have front, back, right, left, and halt functions called under loop. And there are absolutely no errors. Now I want to simply select these four and press control slash for commenting them down. And then I'll simply press control R once again. So I'll show you the demo in the next video, so stay tuned for that.